Have you ever wished you had a faster way to learn a new skill? That's what I'm going to show you in this video. I'm going to be distilling the wisdom from this book into six actionable steps for you to follow to learn any skill you want a lot, lot quicker. My name is Andrew Barry. I teach people how to teach on the internet. Welcome to my channel. Let's dive right in. So this video is a follow-up to the previous video. In that video, I go through the whole book and sort of set up the premise of mental representations. In this video, I'm going to go into a lot more detail on mental representations and show you in six steps how to create your own. Okay, so why this book? So th this book literally changed the way I think about skill development. There's a concept in this book that is backed by a lot of research and a lot of, a lot of thought into distilling the principles of that research called deliberate practice. It was literally a game changer for me. I sat, I was lying in bed one night reading this and immediately knew I had to start a podcast around this concept. And for those of you who haven't checked that out yet, you can check a link to it in the show notes. This book completely changed, like I said, the way that I view skill building. And in that show, I interview people to really unpack how they learn the skills that they learn. In this video, I'm going to cover the six steps that you can follow at home to create the mental representations you need to achieve mastery in any skill you set your mind to. So the six steps are identify the expert performers, figure out what they do that makes them so good, come up with training techniques that allow you to do it too, then find someone to coach you, have a bias for action, and finally, design how you're going to maintain your, your motivation. All right, let's dive in. First step is identify the expert performers. If you want to be a great writer, there are hundreds of thousands of great um, examples out there. So pick the ones that resonate the most with you. That can apply to any skill, any field. But the important thing to remember in this step is be careful which experts you pick. A couple tips for doing that is to talk to other people. Seek out who they think are the experts in a certain field. People that you look up to, ask them for recommendations. It's really important to get this choice right because this is the person you're going to be modeling a lot of your behavior on. Quick caveat as well, this isn't to say that you have to learn from somebody else. Um, there's obviously, you know, books themselves are an excellent, excellent way to learn something. But you want to see the you want to see the the fruits of the labor, as it were, the, the the actions that have been manifested in the real world by someone who's mastered that thing that you want to do. Um, so so find that and really try and um, pinpoint that person that you think can take you to the next level by watching them. So the second step is figure out what makes them so good. Now, I do this, like I said earlier, in my podcast. If you want to get a kind of an idea or a glimpse into how to do that, go and listen to a couple of those episodes because I designed the question set that I use for that around, the, basically around this book. Every single um, thing that they point out that experts do, I try and break that down for others. Things like getting out of your comfort zone is a key, key part of learning any new skill getting feedback and, and having sort of tight feedback loops, um, working with coaches and mentors, um, having support of friends and family. There's also a blog post, links in the description below, where I take that blueprint and I use it for a case study on, um, for those of you who've seen My Octopus Teacher, it was a brilliant documentary on Netflix last year. So go and check that out as well if you wanna get an idea of how to deconstruct what an expert does well. Now you need to design training techniques to help you do through repetition what that expert does. So an important thing to remember is be proactive. Really challenge your mind or your body to do things that get you out of that comfort zone that will really accelerate your learning. A great example of this that I shared in the previous video was Mozart. We all know him as a prodigy um, when it comes to musical composition, but where he got started as a very young child was copying the compositions of other artists of his time. And through that process, he learned the rules and the techniques and the cadence and the sounds that he then used to create his own original work. Another great example of that is writers who recommend that you go and find your favorite passages or paragraphs from, from books and literally just rewrite them with your hand. 
Um, those are great, great ways for you to practice that skill over and over again and focusing on specific things. And we'll get to that in a second um, to practice. So let me just also clarify here or, or set the expectation that this is difficult. It's really hard to, to go from, uh, I guess, novice to expert in a field. It takes time, but more importantly, it takes a lot of focused effort. So there's often a point that you plateau or you get stuck. So what do you do when, when that point comes along? So the first thing you want to do is figure out exactly what is holding you back. What mistakes are you making? When are you making them? Really, the process of self-reflection here is really useful. One of my podcast guests, uh, Chris Sparks, is a professional uh, top 20 in the world online poker player. And he would literally sit down after every single evening or the next morning of games. And he played 50 to 60 games simultaneously every single day. But he would sit the next morning and he would analyze his thought process and his decisions in each of those games. That's what deliberate process looks like. And that's the hard part that people often miss out on. I always try to deconstruct my goals into what are those critical sub skills or mm. mindsets or network, what have you. What, what, what is that leverage point which allows mm. me to maximally move forward towards this North Star. So big part of this is obviously pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and seeing what breaks. You've really got to test uh, your limits here and, and figure out those, uh, those boundaries so that you can push them and get better at them and even increase them over time. So then what you want to do is design a practice technique to focus on those specific weaknesses. That's a key, key element to this whole idea of deliberate practice. While you're practicing, you really want to pay attention to what happens. There's um, another one of my, my guests, actually, David Vessels, who coaches the Melbourne Rebels professional rugby team, talks about how with his team, they employ a process called train hard, fight easy. So they, they go really intense in the practice and they spend a lot of time paying attention to what's happening in that practice uh, so that when it comes to game day, the players are more relaxed more um, open to express themselves and they're just more prepared and finally there's always a point where you've got to be honest with yourself and if you're not improving you've got to try something else all right so there's no point in beating your head against a brick wall um, if you're not actually making progress so a key part of this as well is measuring that progress so try and try and figure out what the sort of measurable things that you want so if you're learning a new language it might be um, the length or type of conversation that you can sustain the number of words you can recognize in, in a TV show. Um, these are all things that you can measure. And, it, and again, if you're hitting that point and you've tried everything, move on to something else. Um, move on to a different way to practice that skill, not necessarily the skill itself, but that point may come to. The fourth step is to find someone to coach you. Now, this is sometimes can feel like it's an unattainable or unaffordable luxury for some for some people but there are ways to 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 get coaches and mentors you don't necessarily have to pay for because basically what you want is someone to watch what you're doing and to show you where you're going wrong where it helps to pay someone who is an expert in that field is that they know the order of things that you should be going through so you don't waste time going down different you know wrong dead ends uh, you actually, you know, you can, they have a very clear process and once you've mastered a certain step, you go on to the next step and on to the next step. So that's a, that's a very important point of, of having a coach. They obviously understand how to perform the skill too. And so they can provide very specific feedback and actually demonstrate for you what you should be doing. So another really great benefit of having a coach. And finally, the best coaches can devise practice routines for you. So you don't even have to worry about that. You can actually sort of just dive into actually doing the work um, and, and getting better and measuring your progress and working on your weaknesses. So number five, pure mental analysis is not enough. You actually have to take action. That means you've got to try what that expert that you're, that you're modeling your behavior on is doing. You've got to fail. You've got to figure out what you failed on and then you've got to go and do it again. And you've got to repeat that process over and over again. The key is being deliberate about it. So you're not just wasting time doing the same thing over and over again, but you're working on specific aspects of it to make sure that 
you are improving in the right areas. So bias to action is really so, so important here. I cannot understate this enough. If you want to learn how to write, write, publish that work, get feedback on it from people, see what resonates, see what doesn't, and keep improving that. I mentioned in the first video for me with this YouTube channel, this is a very new thing for me and um, something that I'm learning as I go. So every single time I post a new video, I make a, a sort of note to myself of what things I want to do better next time, what are the lessons that I learned. Obviously the comments that you guys put at the bottom of this video really help for me to know what resonates, what doesn't resonate. So please do share those thoughts as well as we go through these videos together. The final step is motivation. Now this is kind of the, the key thing that underpins everything. And briefly, you get external motivation and, and internal, or extrinsic and intrinsic. Both of these, so two very different types of motivation, both important, but intrinsic motivation is the, is the key. That's the one that's gonna drive you to keep getting better, and it's gonna get you through those really tough stretches where you don't feel like you're getting better. But if you have the right person in place to help you, if you have a deliberate paying attention approach to your practice, you will get better, but you need to be motivated to do this. So a couple of tips that I recommend, and we'll talk about extrinsic motivation in a little bit as well, but for intrinsic is really connect with why you are doing what you're doing. For me with this YouTube channel, I'm doing this so that I can share with others skills, ideas, practices, and concepts for helping them become better teachers. Because for me, the more teachers we have, the more people we have that are being educated in the by the best practitioners out there, right? So there's, there is nothing like more important to me than that. For you, you've got to figure out what that meaning is that you connect with, right? Because it's those days where you're just like, all right, this is, this is hard, this, I'm, I'm getting nowhere, that you need to remind yourself of what that thing is, that, um, that the real reason why you're doing this. Right, so there you have it. The six steps to accelerate your learning of any skill you set your mind to. So the first step was identify the expert performers or role models that are already performing the skill at the highest level in your field. Then you wanna figure out what makes them so good. Deconstruct their process so that you can get a better understanding of how they go about it. Then come up with training techniques that allow you to do it, to practice what they do. Then find someone to coach you. If it's, if it's really impossible to find someone who is an expert, then get feedback from as many people as you can. But if you can find that expert, they know the order of things that you should be doing it in, and they can give you expert feedback and demonstrate how to do what you're supposed to be doing. The fifth step was remember that mental analysis is not enough. Have a bias for action. Produce, publish, ship. Get stuff out there so you can get feedback and see what resonates with people. And finally, think deliberately about your motivation. Connect at the very beginning. Spend some time reflecting why you are doing this. Come back to that thing often to make sure that it's there for you when you need it the most, when you're really struggling and you feel like you've hit a wall. And of course, throw in a few external rewards in there as well to help you kind of build momentum as you get started. Right, that's it. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. And if you've got any questions on a specific skill you'd like to build, shoot them in the comments below. I'm happy to give you some feedback and some thoughts and maybe point you in the right direction for certain experts. I will see you next week.